guys, how you doing? So in this uh, car on the go, car on the go, code on the go vlog, I'm going to talk about CoffeeScript versus JavaScript and the dynamics between those two languages that tells you a lot about the software development industry. So let me just get straight to the point, just in case you got to go play Apex or something. CoffeeScript was uh, a few years back. People were like, ooh, CoffeeScript. The hipster nerds were, ooh, CoffeeScript runs faster than JavaScript. It's better. you got to use CoffeeScript. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was, I don't know if I, yeah, I think I addressed it, but I would have never gone with CoffeeScript because the rule of thumb, when you have a technology, whether it be a programming language or a framework, that is extremely dominant in the marketplace, for it to be replaced, there would, there would literally have to be some sort of paradigm shift for that to happen. It is very, very rare that you see uh, a very established technology replaced by something that's maybe 20% better or 30% better. It has to be five times better or more. My old uncle, who's now passed away, he used to manage $50 million projects for the Canadian Research Council, which is uh, basically our um, technology research arm of the government. He would, hand, he would handle these projects, like crazy projects I won't get into, but he had budgets $50 million and up. And he used to tell me, he taught me that lesson back in the 90s. He said that uh, he, he was more strict than me. He said that, uh, in his opinion, for a new technology to replace an old, the new technology had to be 10 times better, 10 times more productive in some significant measure. So, that being said, if we look at CoffeeScript, now CoffeeScript was faster, blah, 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 but uh, JavaScript was so dominant, and all the JavaScript people had to do was uh, come in with ES6, which is the latest version of JavaScript, and uh, you know, ES6 is not as fast as CoffeeScript, apparently. I haven't done the test. This is based, based on what I'm reading. But nonetheless, CoffeeScript is now boo, 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 no more. So that's just the, uh, the situation there. So the reason I bring this up is not to trash CoffeeScript because, you know, who cares about CoffeeScript? Nobody uses it. To, to drive home a point about the technology world, about in general, that... You guys got to be careful about jumping on the new hot technology. If it's going to blow away everything, it's not necessarily going to blow away everything unless it's significantly better, unless it's a huge paradigm shift relative to what's already established. That all said, I think that today in 2019, uh, spring 2019, I don't see a, a, a change to the web stack in any significant way going forward. I think the web stack is pretty settled and uh, it has been since maybe 2012, 2013 maybe. It hasn't changed too much. It hasn't changed too much at all. This is in contrast to prior to that time where the web stack was changing very quickly. The technology was changing very, very quickly, especially early, early on in the days. When I first started writing web code back in 1994, almost every six months, it seems, that there would be a significant changes and updates and upgrades to the web technologies, whether it be uh, upgrades to HTML, upgrades to JavaScript, the inclusion of CSS, upgrades to CSS, uh, browser tech, et cetera, et cetera. It was significant. And then the way we would write server-side code whether it be with uh, Java, well, first it was like uh, C, and then it was Perl-based, and then we went to uh, Active Server Pages was huge for a while. It's ASP Classic today, by today's naming. And then we went to uh, then Java and Serverless, and then JSPs. Anyway, I'll stop. The point is, is that things, when a technology begins, any new technology, and you're probably seeing this in the AI space, although I have not looked myself, but when a technology is starting, it's just starting here, and you're going to see huge changes, like boom, 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 every, like very quickly, because everybody's jumping in, and people are learning how to work with the technology, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you see these huge changes, boom, 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 boom. And then once the technology gets to a certain level of maturity, then you see the rate of change is not so steep, it's not so fast, it's kind of slopes like this. 
So it doesn't change much over the years, right? It just slows down. And you see that with the web. In the 90s, it was very, very quick, very big changes. Then around 2000, it started to slow down. Then 2000, between 2000 and 2003, which was compared to previous years, was a wide gap. It went from uh, CSS as a... Um, as, as a supporting technology, CSS became a, a key technology in the sense of people use CSS for layout as opposed to table base. And then from 2003 to about 2012, we had a pretty stable, in terms of the, uh, the tech that was being implemented, it was pretty stable. It was Flash for rich client experience in the web browser, CSS for layout, etc. And then uh, people went into Bootstrap. And then by 2012, though, Flash was completely killed off, big part because of Steve Jobs. And then uh, HTML5 came out, replacing XHTML. And here we are. Uh, today's front-end web development stack is pretty, very, it's very, very close to what we had back in 2012. You know? Uh, things are pretty stable. I think today, if you're developing very you know, large, if you're developing front-end technologies for very large corporations, you're probably going to be using uh, React, uh, maybe a little Angular for very large businesses, and I think Vue is going to end up being the, the big one in the end. In my opinion, I think Vue is going to take over uh, much in the same way that PHP has taken over. I know a lot of people out there wrongly assume PHP is still PHP 3, like 10-year-old PHP, but PHP is, is the dominant server-side programming language. And people go, people say, you're a PHP uh, pumper. Well, I, yes and no. I'm language neutral, and I've done more, much more coding in Java than I've ever done in PHP, that's for sure. Uh, that being said, so... Um, What's my point? Jeez, I forgot the point of the video. Oh, yeah, CoffeeScript, JavaScript. One thing you got to take away from that is, again, before you jump on a new hot technology, you got to understand that the newer technology has to be significantly better. So, um, for example, when Ruby hit its peak in about 2007, I was saying in old blog posts, and I've posted links to these in the past in past videos, that PHP was going nowhere. And at the time, you have to remember, everybody was going, Ruby's going to take over, Ruby's going to take over. And I said, no, it won't, no, it won't. It had some good things about it, some cool stuff, but it also had some things that, are, that were not so good about it. And uh, I felt that it wasn't that much better or, than PHP to, to, uh, to have it replace PHP or Java. And I felt that, uh, in fact, in other areas, PHP was far superior to Ruby. So depending on how you want to look at it. And of course, the big thing, PHP has this just, it just had critical mass in terms of market share. When, somebody gets, when something gets so popular, it's really hard to displace it. Kind of like Windows, right? Windows, like Windows Vista was god awful. Windows 8 wasn't very good, didn't matter. Windows was so huge, so popular, that even though Vista and 8 were around for years and they're just god-awful operating systems, it didn't matter. It didn't, it didn't, didn't hurt Windows at all. Windows is just too dominant. Again, the alternative operating systems, whether it be Linux or Mac OS, they're better in many respects, especially those between you know, Mac OS and, and Linux versus Windows 8 and Windows uh, Vista. <laughs> It's no competition, but still not good enough to displace it. And uh, here we are in 2019. Windows 10 is dominant. With Linux, will probably never replace Windows, and especially now that you get Windows for free. And uh, Mac OS will never replace Windows. It's you know I I generally prefer Mac OS over Windows, but there are things about Mac OS that drive me bananas too. So you know. Um, there you go. So all I'm suggesting as a new developer, understand that the dynamic these days with the technology is not changing so quickly. Uh, number two, try not to get caught up in the latest and greatest uh, frameworks and, 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 and languages that may come out and libraries. Oh, they're going to replace everything because 
people who make the hiring and uh, buying decisions for software, and this is the final point, uh, they are, as I am, very reluctant to adopt some new cutting edge nerdling tech simply because you don't want to find yourself invested in a technology stack that uh, becomes um, obsolete or becomes very difficult to hire programmers uh, to write in. So for example, I never just used Ruby because I have a bunch of deficits I thought I found in the language, a bunch, bunch of things I didn't like. Although there's a lot of things I did, I did like, but the main, one of the main reasons I didn't do it is because I realized that I did not think that Ruby would take a significant mind share. And I knew that if I had my, uh, my software in Ruby, my cost of development would be extremely high. And because it would be harder and harder and harder to find good Ruby developers. So I'm super happy I stuck with PHP. I'd be better off, much better off with PHP or .NET or, uh, of course, the, you know, the 800-pound gorilla in the room, I keep, I should mention it more often, is JavaScript and Node. You know, my two top choices for server-side programming uh, stacks is Node with uh, Express or PHP Laravel. But without a tell, if I'm building sophisticated apps, web apps, uh, with server-side tech. And my third and fourth choices would be Java and then uh, .NET. Uh, there you go, for server-side programming stacks. Anyhow, so I hope you get the gist of this message. Don't jump into a new tech so quick. Remember CoffeeScript, it was better, it was better. Now, boop, you know, Ruby, it's better, it's better. Boop, Ruby is still, you know, it's not dead. You see it's in maybe the top 10, number 10 or 20 in the top 20 of the popular languages, but I think that's going to continue to fade, continue to fade, because uh, it had certain advantages, Ruby did, but it was mainly the Rails framework, and it was a great framework, and the people who did Rails did a great job, really helped the programming community, so thumbs up to the Rails community, thumbs up, because they, they pushed the bar forward and forced uh, all the other communities to uh, to come up with better web frameworks and now we have them like php laravel is a if you're building a, an app of any sophistication from scratch server side php laravel is an ass kicking framework there's no question about it i've used many it's really really good and it surprises me how um how, how they continue to keep it pretty cool there's uh, anyway i won't get into that so there you go that's the story. I hope you found it useful. Bye-bye.